The site is called Close Nacholok, and it's right at sea level. The people living here would have had easy access to the richness of the shallow coastal waters. Nowadays, it's entirely possible to walk past it and see nothing more than a grass-covered mound. You'd have no idea that it is, in fact, an ancient housing estate, albeit a very small one. But when this mound was dug in the 1950s, it revealed some extraordinary remains. Underneath this great earthwork, the archaeologists found the base of a stone rampart in places over three metres wide. Whether the rampart was originally covered in earth like it is today, it's not possible to say. But the whole mound was surrounded by a ditch, which nowadays looks shallow because it's filled with soil over the centuries. But originally, it was nearly three metres deep and eight metres wide at its top. This man-made ditch uses a natural gully for part of its length, giving us some idea of how steep the sides might once have looked. The whole effect must have been very impressive from the outside, but what were the people who built it defending? Well, in here was a small group of roundhouses. Underneath where I'm standing are the remains of four, maybe five huts. Their stone bases still intact with the hearths in the centre and a marvellous system of drains. The photographs from the dig show just how beautifully the stone walls were built. The stone used was the local limestone, but it's been carefully prepared and dressed and shows a high degree of skill and care. It's not easy to date this site, but it's thought its main occupation was in the Iron Age, which would put it about 500 BC, two and a half thousand years ago. The huts were actually quite sizeable. One of them was nearly seven metres across. They all had a central hearth with a drain running from it. But some of them had a second drain that ran round this side and a third drain that ran round that side. They all joined together at the front and ran out of the door. Looking at the drawings by Peter Gelling, who dug the site, you can see the layout of these multiple drains. One running from the central hearth, a second one from the left and a third from the right, all joining together just before the doorway. And it's intriguing to speculate why such a small hut needed three drains. The drains were lined with stone and covered with small slabs, so whatever they carried was well hidden under the floor. Peter Gelling also found traces of a completely different building in the enclosure a small rectangular structure of a much later period. Possibly a Viking longhouse or an animal buyer. It seems it was occupied long after the roundhouses were abandoned and fell into disrepair. Although it's impossible to say precisely what this homestead looked like, if you'd been walking past in the Iron Age, it might have looked something like this. No pottery was found here, but that's common on Iron Age sites. The people were probably using wooden bowls and indeed iron pots. But we do know a great deal about what they ate. And the reason we know that is that during the excavation, hundreds of bones were discovered. There were bones of cattle, sheep, pigs, chicken, horses, edible crabs from the shore and hundreds of limpets. No dog bones were found, but they did find fossilised dog faeces. And that means that they kept dogs, but unlike their horses, they didn't eat them. Oh, and they found one hedgehog. One can only assume that that didn't go down very well. The archaeological evidence shows that the people who lived here suddenly abandoned the place around 50 AD, and no one knows why. Well, there are lots of theories. One even concerns what was happening over the sea in Britain. They were playing host to some visitors who were going to stay more than 450 years, the Romans. Now, there's no evidence the Romans ever came here, but I can't believe they never did. After all, they were sailing up and down the coast over there. They must have seen the Isle of Man, and I'm sure they came here even if only for a weekend break. So the speculation is that one day these people looked out to sea 
and saw Roman galleys. The Romans came ashore, captured these people and took them away as slaves. A colourful idea, if nothing else.